as our choir director sang us a song, Amen. Oh, y'all, come on, give God a hand cup of praise. Come on, give God a hand cup of praise like you mean it. I said, get on your feet and give God a hand cup of praise because he's God and God all by himself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many, how many of you know that God is a faithful God? How many know faith?
She always told us to pray about it. And God told me to call her on the telephone. And if she don't answer, leave a message. Pastor Thomas, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you put in us. I appreciate for giving the opportunity to minister the word of God. Here over 30 something years, going close to 40 years ago. Thank you for teaching me about prayer. Thank you for teaching me about the word of God. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Because everywhere I go, I remember it started off right here at the Church of Dope. All the people got saved, all the folks got delivered. You know, I mean, worldwide, you know, all over the world, people hear our ministry, see our ministry. But it started right here at the Church of Dope, that little bitty building over there, that other building sitting over it. The little red building. Little Bill, when I got saved, we didn't have no room in there, so got happy. We ran around the church and came back and started dancing and shouting some more. <laughs> it started there. The first night I remember I preached, and one of the things I, I, I said in the message, stop lipping God, and one of the young ladies got saved that night. Say, I've been lipping God all those years. And then God said, what I'm doing, I'm showing you that you got a ministry of salvation. Ministry of getting folks saved, getting folks delivered. And you know, it ain't, about, it ain't about us looking cute. It ain't about being popular. It's about the word. Amen. And that's why I believe in the word. I believe in the same way everywhere I go. Amen. I don't preach no different here than I preach at Pleasant Grove or, I, I, or what I, I preach anywhere else. It's the same word. The same style. Because we got to be real. The devil's out to kill, still and destroy. Amen. 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 I'm not, not going to be before you long because Pleasant Grove knows that I'm not a long way to preach it. I've learned that the longer you go up there, the more folks forget what you say. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Pass out, throw your hand up. It's like right there. I learned that over the years. Now, y'all know back in the day. Y'all know back in the day. Hey, pe people were preaching two or three hours. And one time, Brother Ford preached about three hours one Sunday. We were scared to move. Y'all remember them days he preached three or four hours? And he had something to say the whole time. So one woman said, you better quit chewing that chewing going up in here in my service. Y'all remember days? It get you on the spot. But I'm not going to do my life. It's chew chewing going between you and God. <laughs> let's, let's get ready. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. We thank you for the word is good all by itself, Lord. 
God, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will now take place in my life. That now, God, I will get in the way and let your Holy Ghost get in place. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. Okay, I want you to go to the familiar book of uh, scripture tonight. Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Y'all know we don't preach this so much. You've heard it so many times. But I want to tell you, it is more, uh, it is more that we should get this word more than ever before. It is important that we get this word right here like never, ever before. This is it, y'all. This is the power that we have to use. I'm telling you, when I was back there, uh, I didn't know what I was going to preach, but God said, I want you to preach this. I know sometimes you got to wait for the Holy Ghost to come in. Because sometimes we don't wrote these things down and say, God, I'm going to preach this. It's going to tap the whole church. I don't want to tap the whole church. I want the church to be delivered. I want the church to be empowered. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because you can tap the whole church and everybody go out and look in the same way. Just don't shout. and ain't got nothing after you do shout. Amen. Okay, Ephesians. Uh, 6 and 10, it reads. Finally, my brothers and sisters would say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In other words, the schemes of the devil. But we rest not against flesh and blood, not against your children or the folks around you, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high place, government places, government places, national places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. Having all done to stand, stand. Stand therefore having your Lord's grit with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked one. Somebody say the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I want to talk to you if uh, just a few minutes. Give me about 10, maybe 15, 20 minutes. From a message in Tyler, the fight is on. The fight is on. It's on. You don't think the fight is on now? The devil himself is attacking everybody. The devil himself is attacking you. He don't care how long you've been saved. He don't care who your mama is. He don't care how long you've been in the church. He don't care if you got the Holy Ghost, you've been dipped down and anointed all. He's still attacking like never before. The fight is on. We are in literally not a physical fight, but it is a spiritual fight we're in. We're fighting for our very souls. We're fighting for our lives. The enemy himself is armed and dangerous. Armed with all kinds of evil weapons like we never seen in our lives. We're back, back in the day we could pray this thing away, but it's going to take more than just praying away. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to have the word of God. And then again, you got to rebuke some things that come against you. That come to your spirit. That come to your house. The Bible says, Finally, my brothers or sisters, be strong. You got to be strong. You can't be weak now. You got to make sure you're strong. You can't be weak and tell out. I'm not going to church because of the way the folks look at me. Because, you know, what I heard about the preacher, what I heard about. Baby, you better get in the house of God. Amen. Folks think that you can watch it on, um, uh, you know, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Let me tell you what, the devil let you only see a little bit. But when you get in the house of God, you'll feel the spirit. It said be strong. The word be strong means you got to have some power. That means you can't walk around with your head hung.
hung down. You can't walk around your mama and grumbling and complaining and not having a prayer life and not knowing no word on the inside. The only way to be strong, you got to lift them spiritual weights. Somebody said, what is spiritual weight? Fast and pray and stay in the word. You got to learn how to turn back your plate. You got to learn how not to watch everything and look at everything and talk to everybody and listen to everybody and go with everybody and say and let everybody pop inside of you and put a word in your life. Everybody can't put a word in my life. Amen. Amen. Why they can't put a word in my life? Because how many of some folks' word ain't God's word? Amen. That's why you got to have a strong mind. I preach a lot about the man. My wife said, all you do is preach about the man. I'll tell you, I preach about the man. I'll tell you, keep on preaching about the man. Because you got to be strong in your man first. This is the most powerful thing you got is your man. The most powerful thing you got in life is your man. If your man gets messed up, you can know all the words you got that you can have. You can have all the sanctified that you want. But if your man messed up, you're the sanctified walking around man messed up person. I know a lot of folks like that. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. No, all the scripture can, mm-hmm. you'll quote everything, but still lost. Alright, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Power means that you mighty with God on your side. Mm-hmm. Not mighty with your pastor. Love your pastor, answer, but when you mighty with you. I, 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 I love my deacons, but I ain't mighty with them. I love my brother, but I ain't mighty with them. But it's only mighty with the Lord. Yeah. See, God, one day God gonna call Pastor Anderson home. What you gonna do? Yeah. One day God gonna call Bishop Care home. What you gonna do? Yeah. See, that, see, you got to be mighty and strong in God because some of us finna leave off the scene. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I mean, I look at uh, uh, Mother Doyle over there. She's, she's in her 90s and still praising God, still worshiping God. We got some folk that's in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s and can't give God no praise but in the church. Amen. That's why you got to be mighty in the Lord. People are depending on their apostles, their bishops, and their teachers, and their pastors, and all them folks to make them strong. But you better get in the word for yourself. Amen. I say, strong and mighty in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. The devil was so tricky. Man, he got this stuff looking like he's sanctified. Looking like it's holy. Look like it's from God. I mean, dressing like it's from God. Can I get a witness? And I mean, I mean, I mean and, 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 and prophesying like it's God. I know, but, but you better you better know you better know the devil's schemes, yeah. tricking folks and saying everything is all right. Just let it happen. Let God work it out. Sometimes you got to tell the devil you got to work up out of here. Amen. Amen. The fight is what on. on. All right, let's look at this. Look at someone say it's on. It's on up in here. For the rest, not against flesh and blood. For the rest, against principalities. We're wrestling not against your children. Your children ain't want to give you all no problems. Them demons that are attacking your children. Amen. It ain't them folks that, that that you know when they attack the uh, the capital, the capital back on uh, that day. You know they attack what they what they call that day. Yeah, whatever day it was, they attack the capital. It, it was it wasn't them folks. Dude. It was a spirit jumped in them. It was a spirit. How many of a spirit is jumping up? We don't watch what's going on with the crowd. You can hang with everybody. You can be saved up there. Some of the folk that we were sanctified folks up there. How many of the devil don't care? He don't care who you is. If it gets you angry for a minute. I mean, principalities, the Bible, Bible says, talk about principalities, they're the local spirits. We got to fight against some local demons that attacks us. Some local stuff that come only to your house. Or to your area, to your city. There's some things that happen in this city that don't happen over up just up in Enterprise. Right. There's some stuff that happen in, in Enterprise or over in Montgomery that don't happen in Dothan. There are spirits that really hold over the area, principalities. Can we, can we preach this tonight? Can we teach this tonight? All right. All right. Somebody say the fight is on. Against powers of darkness and rulers, against the powers of darkness. 
and um, the rulers of this world. Let me tell you something. This world got some dark folks in it. And they ain't, they ain't all out there in, in the streets. You got some dark folks that go to church on Sunday. You'll be surprised some folks work witchcraft right up in the church. You'll be some folks that plus some, some ministry of here overpowered by witchcraft spirit and saying it's okay for this, okay for that. You don't let the devil get a witchcraft spirit on you. It'll destroy folks. Darkness is so dark now. We are in a spiritual darkness like never before. The, the American church in America is just one generation from not knowing the Lord. Yet people don't want to come to church no more. You, you don't see youth in the church like it used to be. So what the enemy is doing, he's attacking them with the darkness of this world with Facebook and Instagram and all kind of stuff. Social media. And they think that it's alright. Tell them you don't have to come to church. You're going to be this. They're trying to get likes on Facebook. How many people going to follow them? You better be following Jesus. world, y'all. Yeah, the darkness is everywhere. You, but there's natural light, but there's darkness all around. Amen. The Bible say that Satan himself is like turned his spirits or his ministers. They have an angel of light. Yeah. They look like they help you, but really what they're doing, they're out to steal your soul. Amen. Somebody say the fight is on. I know. It ain't no jumping and shouting message. I don't forget about jumping and shouting when folks go into hell while we jumping and shouting. Amen. 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 All right. And we're fighting against spiritual wickedness in what high places. These are government officials. These, these are folks that make the laws against the Bible, against the word of God. These, these, these are the times when folks are saying that, that wrong is right and right is wrong. These are the times when folks are taking down standards and said, okay to be everything, anything, anybody, who you want to be. But my Bible says, and your Bible says that we are peculiar people. We are different people. And it doesn't go by, as I tell us, we said all the time, that tell them, holiness ain't just a name on the church, but holiness is a lifestyle that we live. It's a lifestyle. And you can have, you can have holiness on your church all day long, but let me tell you something. If we ain't living it, you can take the holiness of the church and you can put church up there. Amen. 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 And we, we're not living holy. We're not living like, like the John the Baptist live about baptizing, take Baptists off the church and put Baptists up there. Amen. John the Baptist said, Here is one coming. Come and hear you. I'm just the one that paid the way for Jesus to come and leave in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 It's good to be baptized, but make sure we baptize in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because the fight is what? Oh, it's a fight, man. We are in a spiritual fight, yeah. and the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. I got a few more minutes. Let me go on a little bit further, y'all. Fight is on. Everybody say the fight is on. Fight is on. Therefore, take it unto you the whole armor of God that you be able to withstand in the evil day. The whole armor. Stop walking around half dressed. What if I just came up here with my pants on and met this on? Y'all said, Bishop the law to his man. Amen. 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 What if I came up here just, just with uh with no shoes on? And just a, uh, you know, just pants, just pants and shoes on, and no shirt, you know, and just a tap. Y'all say he need to be committed to the special hospital. <laughs> Amen. Well, you can't be had dressed for the battle when you're fighting against the devil because he said, "I got him now." They ain't ready. You got to get ready. When you get ready, you put on everything. And one of the first things you do before you put on your clean clothes, I hope most of take a bath first. So God got to clean you up first before you put the, your whole uniform on. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. God saved you to put the, in order to put your weapon on you, to put your arm on. See, you can't put an arm on if you ain't been saved yet. 
Give me filled with the Spirit. You can't put on this armor because it won't fit on you yet. Anybody get that? Amen. Folks, come out and put on the armor of God. You ain't never gave God your life. So how you gonna put on this armor and let you have been with God, talk with God, and got God ain't on the inside of you? You can't fight the devil and you're on his team. Y'all hear what I said? You can't fight it if you're on his team. You got to be against him in order to put on the whole armor. Okay, put on the whole armor of God, God that you may withstand in the evil days. Stand there for having your lungs gripped with true girl, with true really girl. See what the girl does, the girls hold up the road to keep you from entangling with, his, with the, the feet when they walk in battle. So in other words, in order for us to be able to stand, we can't get tangled up in everything. Amen. You can't listen to every wind and doctrine just because the prophet come into town, just because this one come into town, because they talk about that one. You better pray about stuff. Amen. And I told them, let everybody lay hands on you. Amen. Pastor Anderson talked about that. I never forget that time we went to the tip of and this preacher was there. And I had first got saved, the preacher was there. It was out there by North, few out there. Went up there, this man just hitting everybody the top head, knocking all the way down, pressing them all the way down to the ground. Pat Dunn said, We ain't going back to that church. The boy said, I don't want to go either. Don't go back to that church, Bible. You better know who laid hands on you. Amen. Hey, man, everybody can't lay hands on you. I remember that to this day. Everybody can't lay hands on you. And I'll say, So, truth, make sure truth is right there. Make sure you got yourself, you got the truth. And don't be out there half truth. Gonna tell somebody something you ain't got the, the true word yet. You got what they heard somebody say. Okay? Somebody say to fight it on. Fight it on. Alright, here we go. The next thing. It says, therefore, standing, therefore, having your lawn grip with truth in the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Why you gotta have on breastplate of righteousness? Because the devil is coming at your heart. You gotta protect your heart. You, you got to protect this right here. Because the enemy want to get to your heart. Not really. God, he's not really talking about your physical heart, but your mental heart. Well, see, see, when you're in battle, you protect the physical heart. But when you are in spiritual battle, you're protecting the mental heart. How you think? What you been taught? What you know? See, the, see the people are trying to come in and take what you know and turn it around. You've been taught what's right. You stand firm and stand still on the word of God. Amen. The fight is what? On. All right? It said also, having your feet shone or either wear the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace. The gospel bring peace to the folk life. God won't come up there and try to hurt nobody and try to beat nobody down all the time. How many know? How many know if a preacher always beat you up, beat you down all the time, you need to get your new church. Amen. I know Pastor Alice encouraged y'all a lot of time here, so I am not talking about her. But folks got churches there. Folk every time around beating them down. They ain't never lifting them up, ain't never picking them up, ain't all time. God is good. God can do this. Well, people, let me tell you something. We get beat up enough by the world. We need to come to the church and get some words of encouragement. I know you get beat up on your job, get beat up at work, get children beat you up at home, and then the devil beat on you while you're sleeping in your dreams at night. So you come to church, you're looking for something to lift you up. Yeah. The fight is on. Yeah. It's a fight. Y'all remember back in the day, they say, if the fight is on, everybody run to the fight. Now you got four running from the fight. <laughs> the fight got the fight. Everybody run to the fight. Somebody said, better run no fight now. Somebody said, pow, pow, pow. Everybody go the other way. <laughs> back, back then, back in the day, we used to, we used to do something to fight. Now you better, you better, better have something else to fight with now. They said, pow, pow, pow. I said, wow, 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 ain't there. The fight is on. Also, it said, gospel of peace, above all, taking... The shield of faith. This is powerful. Faith is what we got to have. In the last day, you ain't got no faith. Baby, you will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, this is this time, y'all. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, I remember one thing that I, I remember 
here at the church of Joseph with Pastor Anderson and and all the one, them, them, them mothers at church, one thing they had faith. They had faith because so many times hear about the story how they were down there in Florida down there. Lord told them to move to Alabama up here. They came to Alabama and left everything at home. They had to have some faith. <laughs> left the hub and the church and everybody. Y'all better, I'm going, oh, y'all, y'all better come on. I'm going with God Tell me to come. Boy, you tell people to leave home now, they go, I ain't going nowhere. God ain't told me that. <laughs> they had have a faith. They came up preaching on the streets, on the on the street corners and stuff like that. And people look at them like they're crazy and stuff. You had to have some faith. But look at we look at, look at now, look at now. They're still living in their late 80s, their 90s, still living because of the faith of God and get around better than most folks in. Yeah. Don't tell me faith won't keep you. Well, I gotta tell us tonight, God. When we look at it, we don't we see folks that dying of all kind of stuff and all kind of things, but look at God and still blessing them to, to be in their old age. We got a mother at the church, our mother lives at the church where she's 87 years old, and she get around better all the women at the church. It was a faith walk. Now Lord will sit there and just listen to her talk sometimes. Once she gets started and start talking about the Lord, the Holy Ghost just use her because of her faith walk. Faith. Take the shield of faith. Why you gotta have faith? Because some stuff gonna come your way that it's gonna take faith to get you out of it. It's gonna look bad. It's gonna look dark. It's gonna look like you can't make it. But Trying to shake our faith, trying to tell her this way ain't gonna work. Going to church ain't gonna help. Trying to tell you that serving God, it ain't paying off. All kind of stuff was attacking the church. COVID 19 trying to close down the church. And folks quit coming to church, but I never quit coming to church. Folks quit praying. And folks started depending on the government and everybody else. But I knew that God was gonna work it out. It was a test of our faith. Some churches closed in the midst of the pandemic, but we still. Somebody say amen. amen. I came to church every Sunday and preach. Somebody say amen. I know y'all did the same thing. Came to church every Sunday and preach. How I know COVID-19 can't stop the Holy Ghost? How I know they, they tried to destroy Jesus? They thought they destroyed Jesus. But how I know he got up out the grave because they couldn't stop the word of God? Amen. They thought they had killed him. But what happened? He went down into hell and preached a revival in the day. I know that, that was, the fight was on. They thought it was a fight when they killed him. But whenever they, whenever he died, he showed enough. Came with power. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, no, I'm, I'm about the last part here. My time about up. The helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Your mind is so important. Your salvation does not start in your heart. It starts in your head. Somebody said, well, I thought it started in my heart. No, I did You had to get in your mind you want to get saved for it. You had to get in your mind you want to come out your sins for it. You had to get in your mind that you want to give God your life first. And then it went in your heart. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So I found out the helmet, my salvation starts right here. My healing starts here. My deliverance starts here. My joy starts at the top. Matter of fact, the way they kill a snake, cut his head off. Cut his head off, he did. And that's what the enemy's trying to do. He want to cut off our head, our salvation. Try to make you think you're not saved, that you're not this, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because you messed up, the devil trying to tell you you're not saved. Because 
because you was in this and that. The devil trying to tell you God can't use you. But I got news for you. God used folks that messed up. Amen. But God said, I'm cleaning them up again. Amen. David was one of the biggest sinners you ever seen. But God used him mightily to do the will of God because he started the love of God in his heart. Y'all know David was a big, David was a murderer. David was an adulteress. Amen, tell the truth. Amen. David did a whole lot of stuff. But guess what God said? I see a heart. If God take perfect people, I preach a message. God, you imperfect people do perfect things with you. Because if all of us are perfect, God can't use you if you're perfect. Because I need some imperfect folks in order to do a perfect work with you. Because nobody was perfect but Jesus. Right. So God takes what he got and he used who will come to him. He said, whoso will let the one come. Amen. So I start here. My final part here is I get ready to sit down. Which my time is up. To, to also take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit cuts on both sides. It cuts me like it cuts you. Y'all know the word he does preaching for hit y'all word. Don't, don't y'all know it cuts on both sides? It cuts straight down the middle. It hits everybody. The word hit the devil because the devil know the word. Y'all remember? Y'all heard y'all remember? Jesus out fast, he was out there fasting and praying for the days, for the nights. And the devil tried to put word on the Lord, and the Lord put word right back on him. And everything the devil quoted, he was quoting the truth. But, but Jesus called it right back to him and cut him up with it. Oh, yeah. I know you better know what folks called it and you better know how to finish that thing off. Amen. Yeah. Told them, say, turn these stones into bread. Jesus could do it, but Jesus said, uh uh. Man should not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. Or you better watch what you eat. Mm -hmm. Told him to jump off this place, God, get angry. Torch over there. Okay. If you catch your foot against the stone, he said, I know that, but I ain't going to tip the Lord that God. I told somebody uh, a few weeks ago, don't jump out there in the middle of Highway 231 to my God going to protect you. You'll be ran over. <laughs> They'll be talking to your head. Go out there. God going to protect you. Bye, well. 911. <laughs> what happened? He jumped out in front of the car. What we can do now? And then, then the devil said, I'll take it to another place. I'll give you all of this. Give you all the kingdom of the world. And Jesus thought to himself, who we think he's talking to? Say, said, Satan, this ain't none of yours to give. I ain't going to bow down and worship you. The Lord God, God, the only person I'm going to worship. Oh, work. He knew that God owned everything. The Bible says he owned the cow, on the hill, on the hill too. God, can you give me what's already, what's already God? What's already mine? How do, stop letting the devil tell you I'm going to give you something. Say it's already mine. God already gave me what I need. Amen. Matter of fact, the devil got it, the money that the devil thinks got laid up. Really, it's the church money. Come on, say amen. God will take it from the hand and put it in my hand. Let it go win the lottery. God will call the lottery money. Come to me. Somebody say amen. To my child, I'm taking a lot of money. Let's buy a win a lot and send me a million dollars. I'll say, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't nothing dirty about that money. Because when I get to do what I'm going to do, it's going to be clean money. <laughs> Go play the lottery. Bring me my point. <laughs> say amen. <laughs> and like I ain't never put no lottery. Some of y'all been down there scratching to it. <laughs> say amen. You ain't that saying you don't want no money. <laughs> the fight is on. Amen. It's about us knowing who we are in God. God, people don't have to walk around here busting and resting the disgusted. God, God wants to be blessed. But know what to do when you get the blessing. And like it's yours. When God give you something, you give your tithes and offering out of it. Come on, it's my money. And my money, I want it now. <laughs> it's all about us really that the fight is on. The fight is on. The music plays soft.
something. The fight is on. One thing I've learned in the last, I guess, four or five years is that everybody is trying to get, uh, they're trying to take, they want big membership, a lot of folks in the church. They do whatever it takes to have a lot of folks in the church. How do you know a lot of folks don't mean that God is in it? God said in the last days, he said, that we're great falling away. And we are in that time when folks are falling away. And the Bible said last day, they go to phase. In other words, they go there preaching that sound good preaching. Preaching make them feel good. Says, okay to do this, okay to do that. Okay to have this kind of relationship, this kind of relationship. I'm okay to look like this. Uh, your men look like women and women look like men. It's okay to do all that kind of stuff. Okay to dress in the kind of way, act in the kind of way, just come to church. That's where we're at now, y'all. If you take down all the standards, the church will fill up. I know we got to have some standards in the house of God. And, look, and, and don't look to be popular. I don't look to be popular with my preaching no more with God's preaching give me. I don't look to be popular with it. I say, God, God said this preacher can't preach ain't going to be popular. But it's going to be so rewarding. You talking about fight his own folk? Thank you crazy talking about the fight his own. It's a spiritual fight. Come on, stand to your feet. The power of the entire fight is that we got, we already won. It's already our victory. How is it our victory? Because guess what? Jesus paid the price upon the cross. Yes, he died upon the cross. But when he got up on that Sunday morning, he gave us the victory. He gave you and me the victory. And God told me not to even lay hands on about that. That didn't call anybody out. But with every head that is bowed right now, if you've been in a fight, you've been in a battle, you've been in a struggle, you, you've, been, you've been going through some spiritual warfare, God told me tonight, you got the victory. God said it's not for me to lay hands on you. It's not for me to prophesy to you. But God said you got to speak the word. God, God is saying tonight that so many times we wait for the pastor, the prophet, the woman of God, the man of God to minister word to us. But God said I got a word for you. It's within your spirit. He says seek him. Seek him, he said. Hey, God just said, seek me, seek me. Seek me and you shall find me. Seek me and I'll give you a victory. Seek me and I'll give you that deliverance. Seek me and I'll give you that victory over that enemy, that thing that's been attacking your life, your family life. God says, seek him. I hear God saying it's fasting time. God, I hear God saying, time to start fasting. I hear God saying, I hear God saying to somebody, it's time to go on a three-day fast. I hear God saying to somebody, it's time to, time to start praying. You've you been, you been, you been, God been dealing with you about praying and fasting, but yet you had not been doing it. God said, it's time now. God said, when you do it, he said, I'm going to turn some things around for you. God said, turn back your plate. I'm going to turn some things around for you. God said, turn off the TV. Turn off everything around you. God said, I'm going to turn some things around for you. I hear God saying to somebody today that is already done. It's already done. That you've been praying for. It's already done. There's somebody I hear God saying that, that that sickness that the enemy said is unto death. God said he's healing you of it right now. He's healing them of it right now. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Everybody say the blood of Jesus. Whatever you got going on, say the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood. There's wonder working power. 